Kathy Pullings, Assistant Director of Diversity Recruitment for the Polytechnic and your host and moderator. Thank you for joining our discussion on minorities in the Polytechnic. We want to hear from you. What are your questions? Think about what you want to know as we talk about what it's like being a minority student at Purdue and in the Polytechnic. Tonight, you will hear from current Polytechnic students a Polytechnic professor in construction management, an alumni, and the director of recruitment retention and diversity. Before introducing our panelists, you can submit your question in the chat window, log into your Google account or create to submit questions. Um, I will also pose some of your questions to our panelists. You can also send an email to us to respond to a question later. And the email is techrecruit at purdue.edu. That's T E C H R E C R U I T at purdue.edu. We will do our best to answer every question either in the chat room or during our panel discussion. But for email questions you send and we don't get to tonight, Please email us and we will respond as soon as we can. Let's introduce our panelists. So I am going to start. Good evening, Amani. Please state your full name, your major, your class year, your hometown, and any student organizations you're part of. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Imani Ellis. I am a sophomore double majoring in mechatronics and robotics engineering technology with a certificate in entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, I'm from Northwest Indiana, a small town called Lake Station. Um, I don't know if anyone's from that area, but I'm from there. Um, and you said, uh, what else? Organizations? Organizations, yes. Okay. I am um, the vice president of MTA, which is the Minority Technology Association. Um, something to look forward to when you get here. And um, I'm also a part of member of WIT, um, I, which, which is Women in Technology, is another organization here. Um, Boiler Tracks, which is an outreach for underrepresented uh, minorities. Um, those are some of the ones I'm in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Amani. Good evening, Lauren. Hello. Okay, and then I guess just go from there. Um, yes. So, um, hi, I'm, oh wait, can you hear me? Yes. The, uh -oh. Yes. Okay, cool, sorry, it was going, it was, my internet was doing something weird. Um, hi, I'm Lauren McDaniel. I'm a senior double majoring in animation and web programming design. I'm at the Polytech. I'm from Toledo, Ohio. So over near like Detroit area, and then um, for let's see organizations and things I'm a part of. Um, I mean it's kind of an organization, organization, but I'm a part of the Honors College here at Purdue. Um, I've been involved with the Minority Technology Association, and I'm also involved involved with one of the campus ministries on campus called Chi Alpha. So yeah, it's nice to meet you all. All right, good evening, Lindsay. Hi, so hi everybody. My name is Lindsay. I uh, also am a senior here in the Purdue Polytechnic Institute. I am majoring in computer and information technology with a minor in organizational leadership. Uh, I'm from Washington, DC, so I am out of state. And some of the organizations that I I'm not currently involved in any organizations because senior I just like took over my life. But when I was involved in organizations, I was both the events chair and the vice president of the Women in Technology organization. Uh, I was a former member of MTA, a former senior Purdue Polytechnic ambassador, which are the Purdue Polytechnic tour guides on campus. Um, I was also a boiler mentor as well. So I mentored a uh, freshman uh, minority who was in UX design. And I think that was it. All right. Good evening, Joshua. Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm Josh Garcia. I'm a junior uh, in aviation management and uh, pursuing a minor in supply chain engineering technology. 
on uh, some of the uh, organizations that I'm part of here at Purdue. I'm a part of uh, the Purdue Cooperative Housing uh, here at Purdue, so which is a um, very affordable housing that we offer here. There's about five guy houses and seven girls houses. So for any of the students that are looking for uh, a housing that's very affordable, you can talk to me about it. Um, also, uh, was a member of a um, I was a member of the Purdue Polytechnic Ambassador. And then actually today I just got admitted for a uh, Purdue Aviation Ambassador. So I'll be, I'll be doing that this semester and the semesters to come. All right, thank you, Joshua. Professor Sparkling, thank you for being here tonight. Tell us about yourself. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Dr. Anthony Sparkling. I'm an assistant professor in construction management here at Purdue. I've been here for Oh, this is coming up on my third year. I hear my dog barking, sorry about that. But nonetheless, um, I'm, I'm somewhat of a non-traditional, so I went through um, my career first before going back to academia. Went back to school in 2007, went all the way through from bachelor's to a PhD. And I consider myself retired from industry, so now I'm a professor. So I'm here and just uh, willing to give back, talk about my community, where I'm from, uh, hopefully encourage people to join the Polytechnic. And I'm excited for you. Thank you. Meldre, we are so glad to have you with us tonight, a 2016 graduate from the Polytechnic. Please tell us what was your major when you were currently in the Polytechnic? And um, tell us about where you're working currently and about yourself. Alrighty, hello everyone. I currently uh, work in Minneapolis for Target Corporation. Um, when I was a student at Purdue University, I studied industrial engineering technology. Um, and I was involved in a, a lot of different organizations. So it was good to hear some of the other students be involved in Boulder Mentor and MTA. Um, I was the president of MTA in my, my senior year, so in 2015, 2016. Um, and uh, currently, like I said, I live in Minneapolis and uh, I am a global supply planning manager at Target. So uh, I still work in supply chain, which is very related to, to my major that I left Purdue with. Okay, thank you. Tony, thank you for co-hosting with me tonight and tell me about yourself. Thank you, Kathy. Um, it's so good to be here with everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Mungia. I'm the Director of Recruitment, Retention, and Diversity for the Purdue Polytechnic. I um, have 20 plus years with Purdue and uh, I'm very excited to be here. I'm, I'm all about trying to help students get acclimated, uh, you know, get connected, and, um, and students will, will talk a little bit more. But we're here to answer your questions. And again, congratulations on being here. And we're very, very happy to, um, you know, to, to kind of, yeah, answer your questions and, and be part of this day with you. Great, thank you. Um, before we get started with questions, we had our first question come in. And um, Joshua, this is for you. Um, it says, can you get into the flight program without any experience? Uh, from what I've heard, uh, I'm in aviation management, but from what I heard from my professional flight buddies and my brother, he was also in, in my brother was a professional flight graduate in 2016. He came in with no experience. So what I've heard from him and other friends is that, yes, you can uh, come in with that experience. Uh, we'll uh, help you out with getting your private pilot license as well as your commercial license and any other certificates uh, that you're required to be uh, employed by an airline in the future, but yeah, you can come in without any experience. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's go with our first question, and um, this is for Imani and Joshua. What surprised you about the transition from high school to college life, and what kind of adjustments um, did you make from high school to um, your freshman year? Imani. Okay, so what surprised me the most um, transitioning was um, the amount of freedom and flexibility that you have. So prior to uh, coming to the university, 
you know, you're scheduled from nine to, well, seven in the morning to three in the afternoon here, you could schedule in a sense, put your schedule how you want it and have the free, like the freedom to move throughout the day, how you please. It's a lot of, you can get a lot of stuff done, have a lot of free time. Um, and what was the other question? <laughs> the other, the second part. Um, what kind of adjustments did you make from high school to your freshman year? Mm, I definitely um, had to, like, I emphasize getting down better study habits. Um, in high school, you can kind of say, oh, okay, I paid attention. Let's go take this exam. Um, but in college, you actually have to set some time, dedicate some time aside um, to make time to study for those classes. So time management is it was a big transition thing for me. Okay, Joshua, Joshua, um, what about you? What surprised you about the transition from high school to college life, and then the adjustments that you had to make your freshman year? Uh, I agree with with Emmanuel with, with what she had to say. Is definitely how much more free time you have uh, with obviously waking up in high school at six a.m., seven a.m. And then if you have extracurricular activities, sometimes you don't get home until 5 p.m. You have dinner, you do your homework, and then you go back to bed. And sometimes you almost had no time for yourself. But in college, the way that your classes are structured, you're in class for about maybe five times or five hours a day, six hours a day, but you have an hour, two hours in between. So that hour you can use not only for yourself, but you can use that time to go see your professors for office hours. Uh, that was the thing that surprised me the most. Another thing that really surprised me was um, the amount of uh, clubs that you can be a part of, extracurricular things that you can do here. Like I said, I was an ambassador for Polytechnic. I'm an ambassador now for the uh, for the aviation program. There are so many things that you can do here. And actually, when I when I was first here doing uh, something called BGR, which is Willard Gold Rush, uh, there was a joke that went around that there are so many clubs here at Purdue that there is probably a, a, a squirrel watching club. Um, but, and then, uh, to, to answer the other part of the question is how I've adjusted is definitely time management. Uh, you have to be really responsible with your time. Uh, you have to learn how to study, uh, for these exams, uh, here, here in college, because it's completely different and it's structured a lot different than it is in high school. Um, it definitely threw me off guard. My first semester was not my strongest semester because during that, during that first semester was yeah uh, me adjusting and me trying to adapt to um the way that classes are structured here and so much free time okay all right um i see we have another question that has come in um and the question says my son got into polytechnic he has a handful of ap um courses that he took in high school are those ap credits transferred to purdue um, and um, Lindsay, you want to answer that question? I personally would not be the best person to answer the question just because I, I, I came in actually that. with no AP credits. Okay, Tony? I, I can answer that, yeah. Okay. Uh, we do accept AP credit, um, lots of different types, uh, computer science, uh, English, math, all sorts of different AP credits. You do have to take have a specific score. Um, a, a one and a two, usually no, we don't accept. But if you have a three, sometimes it comes in as undistributed. And then if you have a four or a five, it is um, put into your plan of study. And depending on which class it is, it'll be a, a full credit for, you know, let's say Calc, calc 16010, if you got a four or a five, if that makes sense. Thank you, Tony. Mm -hmm. could, yeah, I think I could add just a little bit. Sure. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Um, Professor Sparkling, was that you? That was Josh. Oh, that was Josh? Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, for AP classes, I didn't take any AP classes, but for students that are taking ACP classes, which I did, I took ACP classes through IU. Um, those you can also transfer here, but the only difference is that with AP classes, when you transfer it, uh, whatever grade you got already affects your college GPA. But with ACP classes, 
it only comes in for the credit, so it nullifies you having to take that class or fulfill that credit uh, in the future. The same with AP. No grades come in with AP credit. It just comes in as uh, credit, just regular credit, whether three hours or four hours, depending what it is. Okay. And uh, Amani, did you have a, did you? Well, I was just going to say, um, I took AP Calc in high school. Um, I got, I think I got a four on it. Um, and that came in and I was able to, I tested out of a class. So it, it does pay off if you have taken those credits. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on to our next question. Um, what are some recommendations from our, for our audience as they transition from being away from home to freshman life at Purdue? And um, Lindsay, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, I would say probably um, one, ed one piece of advice that I would give to people that are transitioning um, to Purdue is, is kind of when you get to Purdue and you're starting to be in your freshman classes, uh, make sure to reach out to the people that may sit next to you, that's in front of you, that sit behind you, and um, just introduce yourself and say hello on the first day, because that was something that uh, um, I didn't do my freshman year, but one of my best friends, she reached over to me, she was sitting next to me, and she just introduced herself, and so it kind of makes you, it kind of makes you feel more connected with other people in your class. Um, so that's one piece of advice that I would give. Um, and I and the second piece of advice that I would give to people that are um, thinking about transitioning is when you are, and this is for both parents and students, um, when you are moving to Purdue, it may not be the smartest idea to go home every weekend because then you won't really get that full transition into Purdue, you won't immerse yourself into Purdue, uh, into Purdue culture. Um, so stay at Purdue a little bit longer, even if you're local, even if you're native to Indiana, um, stay at Purdue for maybe a month or two months and just and see how it goes instead of wanting to always go back home. Okay. Um, Lauren, um, could you also elaborate on that question as well? Lauren, are you still with us? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. My internet, like, right when you said my name, went out for some reason. Um, but, yeah, I can definitely agree with a lot of what Lindsay said, particularly with going back to the part about reaching out to people. I'd recommend a lot just looking into different clubs and organizations that you, like, are interested in because Purdue has over, I think it's over, like, in the hundreds, maybe even the thousands for things of all different kinds that be specifically for your department or for your majors. So whether that be engineering technology or animation or things like that, or even for just general interests. So if you're someone who's really down for volunteer work, there are clubs for that. So those, at least for me, I found those in great ways to meet people just because it's a lot of clubs do have call outs at the beginning of the year. So it's a great way to just get involved and to learn about those organizations as well as to make friends and connections through those. Um, and then it also just helps you to be able to have other like reaching out on those like in classes and in those organizations have you to have people that you're able to just reach out to. So for sure, getting people's contact information just to be like, hey, and being willing, like I totally get it because I myself am hard like have a hard time with this is being willing to just be like, hey, do you want to go get lunch or do you want to go grab a coffee just to get to know someone better and to get to be able to just have those connections that can help you kind of get more accommodated to the campus life and all those around you. Okay. If I may add. Oh, yeah. Sure. So we often we encourage the students to, to build community amongst themselves. I do this in my freshman courses. I mean, they all share the same concerns, reservations, uh, fears. Uh, they're worried about grades and, and being um, off on their own. So we try to encourage community, and I love doing that. In fact, we often, at least I do, is I mix the students up even more so that they can get to know the, some additional neighbors, right? 
So it's big. It's, it's about building community and doing that at a freshman level and getting involved in the student organizations. I'm the advisor for several. Uh, the National Association of Minority Contractors, um, the National Electrical Contractors Association, so many others, but nonetheless, you got to build community and get, get engaged and get involved. Good. Thank you, Professor Sparkling, because I want you to hold on to that because that's the question that we're going to get down to when we're talking about how to build a community, how to build your community. So just keep, I'm going to come back to you. Okay. Um, Mel Dre, what advice do you have for high school students to be successful in college and afterwards? Yeah. Um, I would say the biggest thing that kind of helped me be successful in college is is finding a way to, to be organized, right? And so um, I would say this is different for everyone. Some people like something electronic, like a somewhere you can track what you need to do. Some people like a actual, you know, notebook or like a mortar board, uh, which is like a planner that you can enter in uh, things like a day to day. And so I would just say find some way to to get organized that so that you're keeping everything in track and, and you're not forgetting anything. Because when you do get to college, if things do get busier, um, you got a lot that you need to juggle around. And so you just need to make sure that you're doing due diligence to your schedule. So that's my biggest advice. Okay. And I personally, I use the mortar board. So if you don't know what a mortar board is, uh, when you get to Purdue, look it up. <laughs> it's a planner. Okay. Um, we're getting some more questions, um, which is um, really good. Another question is, um, my son is not very good at time management at Purdue. Um, he will be on his own. How do I, how do I be sure that um, he will do good at time management? And that's a great question. And we kind of talked about um, a little bit of that. And so, um, you know, um, Imani, talk about um, your time management. Okay, so um, it, a big thing that helps with my time management for classes is finding people in that class with me and uh, finding a time that works for us to, to dedicate to work on that class. So if I'm in physics 220, which I am now, I find a group of friends who are also like a, just a group of people who are in that class with me. And we dedicate Tuesdays to working on, to going through the lecture slides, to going through the, um, the homeworks, just to work on different things. So a big thing that helped me manage schoolwork time is finding people who are in that class with me that would hold me accountable to say, hey, it's Tuesday, where are you at? You know, we need to do this work. So that was a big thing that helped for me. Also, like uh, um, Mildred said, was writing down in, in the planner. That was a huge thing for me. Okay. Um, Joshua, you have anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with, uh, with what she said is definitely finding people in your class uh, to study with. That's the number one thing that Everybody's going to tell you uh, when you show up to class on the first day, everybody's going to be talking to each other, uh, trying to get numbers, trying to get to know each other, because that's not only you're making friends, but you're you're meeting people that are going to not only push you uh, to be a better student, but, you know, to really do your slides, to do your homework, to meet together. They're going to be people that really get you the good grades on the exam. Uh, another thing is to get a planner as well, uh, set an alarm, uh, set up reminders on your phone. All, I mean, technology is all around us. So have your phone set reminders and let yourself know that, hey, you need to do this. Um, and then another one thing is to not bring video games uh, your first semester of college is, you know, to put that aside because now you're taking a new, uh, you're taking a first step into a different life. Uh, you don't want to bring video games. You don't want to bring distractions your first semester at Purdue because your first semester is crucial into meeting people, into getting accommodated, into uh, getting comfortable with the stress that, that college brings. Right. Which this leads into um, our next question. Um, how is studying and coursework different in college than high school? What resources have you taken advantage of to help with your coursework? 
Um, so, for instance, like experience with professors, <laughs> office hours, and so, um, Lauren, let's let's start with you. Okay, so yeah, that's a great question. So for me, um, with the studying, like the transition from high school to college, um, a lot of the resources, like there's a lot more resources in college. Like there's a lot out there that are open for you and it's just a lot more of you taking the initiative to go to them. So for instance, there are office hours, which are times that professors set up where you, you can Go if you have any questions about whether it be a homework or a project or just what has been talked about in a lecture and you can go in and talk to them 1 on 1, which for me have been very beneficial just because sometimes I need that extra um, reinforcement for stuff. And then there's also SI sessions, which certain classes have like more major classes, so physics, math, which can be really beneficial because they'll have practice problems and things, especially when exams get close. Um, that helped me a lot with my physics class, just being able to do practice problems and have other people around who are able to help with all of those, just to be able to get work checked and have an additional like time. And the good thing is a lot of these are additional. They're not, they're in like the afternoon time. So they are able to kind of more fit into your schedule as opposed to being in the middle of the day when you're typically having classes. Okay. Um, professor Sparkling, as a professor, how do you help guide students through their college years? Um, what do you tell students who need help with class projects? So, so the first part, I, I missed that. I'm sorry, Kathy. You said, oh, what so do I? How do you help guide students through their college years? And um, how do you tell students who need help with class projects? So how do you, um, what resources do you tell students to um, utilize to um, help them with class projects? Yes, so great question. We, we do a lot of collaborative re work in our classrooms. So in other words, the, they, the students rely on their peers um, quite extensively for assistance, but we make ourselves available. Uh, the students mentioned office hours, so we're always open in terms of office hours. We do early warnings to students in terms of if we think uh, students may be struggling, especially at the freshman level. We try to give them some early uh, indicators that you know they need to, you know, maybe step it up just a little bit to to be um, on top of it. Um, student projects to us come pretty easy because again. Uh, we break the students into groups or different teams and they work together and then they come back and present their deliverables to us. But uh, so we don't really find that they struggle a lot, but uh, we're definitely paying attention and keeping an eye on things. But we're always, always available, we're definitely um, flexible in terms of uh, meeting with emails and whatever the case may be. Do you find, um, do you find your students um, take advantage of your office hours? Um, Absolutely, yes. Okay. So right. um, I have an open door policy in my office. So if my door is open, then the students can come in. So I don't really uh, have rigid office hours for them, them to attend to, but rather I'm available to the student. And then I heard time management is some of the things students are worried about as well. We use tools like Brightspace, which is an online tool but what we do is we give a lot of warnings in terms of when assignments are due, when the exams are coming up, when projects are due. And if we enter that into the system, it actually shows up on the students' calendars as well. So again, we have all this technology and calendars and everything else, we have to utilize them to the fullest extent. All right, which um, Tony, this is a great time to talk about one of our retention programs called BEST. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and, and Kathy, I've put several questions on the chat from the audience. I'm just kind of letting you know 
Um, okay. Yeah, we have several resources in our um, in our office for students uh, to to just get the help or the assistance they may have. You know, some people are very good in math. Some people are very good in the the English or you know the writing skills. And and so if you need a little bit of help, it's okay. And so best is building excellence for students in technology. And what we do is we, if you, you need help, let's say in math or, or a polytechnic course or a writing course, um, you know, you, you sign up for best and you are matched up with a, um, a kind of a mentor that has already taken the class and can kind of help you navigate through it, help you kind of prepare uh, for a, an exam or help you kind of get some concepts, uh, you know, in, in a certain, if something new is new, but anyway, and it's all free as well. We also have math and a physics tutoring available uh, online and in person, depending what works best for you. And um, a students, you know, if they're struggling again with math or physics, can go to these uh, help rooms or these uh, tutoring sessions, again, for free, and you can get assistance from a student who's already taken the class and, and you know, can help you kind of navigate it as well. Thank you, Tony. I'm just going to take a break because we've got questions from our audience and we wanted to answer, answer those questions from them. So um, the first one is um, how soon students are taking classes in the major that they picked. So um, once they've signed up for their classes, how soon are they actually in their major taking those courses? Um, and so um, Lindsay, you want to talk about your major yeah. and how and how soon you were in taking your your courses that pertaining to your major? Yeah, so I can say this is actually one of the things that drew me to the Polytechnic Institute, and um, I think we're really unique for this and the fact that you are taking classes in your major or in your department from the very first day that you stepped foot on campus freshman year. Um, my freshman year, I am in the computer and information technology department. So there are four majors that are underneath that. And all four of our majors, we all take the same freshman level courses. So you'll get experience in network engineering, cybersecurity, uh, general IT. And my and freshman year, I was in a uh, freshman year course with a bunch of other um, people that were in my department, and we were in a lab that was basically an introduction to systems analysis. So we were able to just dive right in. We had labs every single week. We had lectures with um, other other uh, computer and information technology majors. So you really got to kind of build those bonds with people, and also know that you are getting your money's worth because you're diving right in at the start. Okay. Um, Lauren, this question is for you specifically because you're in animation and it says, what are the animation classes taught in? Is it Blender, Maya, or something else? Yeah, that's a great question. So it actually kind of depends for which. So the majority of the classes are taught in Maya just for modeling and lighting and um, for animating itself. But there are some classes where you will take some in different um, programs. So I know there's classes where Blender is used specifically for modeling as well as ZBrush. And then there's another class that uses like Substance Painter for texturing, if that's something that you're interested in. So while it focuses in Maya, you do get a chance to kind of step into some of the other um, programs that are used in the industry. So. Okay. Um, and, and the next question is one that um, any of you could answer because I do not know um, if you started in one major and then decided to change your major and how difficult was that for you? So any of you started with one major and then decided to switch to another major within the polytechnic? Um, I did. Uh, I actually started off as a computer and information technology major my freshman year. Uh, that's what I was admitted in. I came into the Polytechnic and I realized that there was a cybersecurity major that was still in my department. It was probably one of the easiest switches 
because it was in the same department, all I had to do was go to my advisor and tell her that I wanted to make that switch. And then it took maybe like five minutes to get into the system um, and I switched over. And then uh, recently, I wanna say uh, about a year ago, I then transferred back into um, computer, the computer and information technology major. Um, so I jumped around a little bit because I decided that the, the career path that I wanted to uh, pursue post-college the computer and information technology major would allow me uh, more flexibility to take the classes that would align with where I wanted to go. Okay. Anyone else? Did anyone else change their major? Uh, so I actually uh, changed my major too when I was at Purdue. Um, I was admitted into mechanical engineering technology. Um, and then I attended a academic boot camp. Not sure if that, that's still going on, but I attended academic boot camp where you did a, a intro level class of that specific major. And uh, I, I re knew it wasn't for me, and so I decided to switch my major uh, to industrial engineering technology. So, um, like Lindsay mentioned, it was pretty seamless. It was easy to do, um, and it was very early in my college career. So it wasn't like I, I took a bunch of classes that you know I couldn't transfer over. Okay, Meldre, we are going to talk about um, STEM ABC boot camp. Um, down, um, it's we're going to get there. Um, okay. But okay. Um, yes, um, and of course, two of the other questions um, that um, our our audience has been asking, um, I think those will be answered um, once we um, get down to those questions. So let's keep moving on. So. Um, let, let's, let's be real um, and talk about this. We know that Purdue is a um, PWI, and um, that is um, um, a predominantly white institution. And so um, how do you manage to find your community and integrate with all students? Um, you know, whether it's a going to the cultural center. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, Imani, do you want to go first? Yeah, that's a really good, a uh, really great question, actually. Um, so as far as um, integrating overall, um, I would say come with an open mind. Um, but as far as finding your community while you are here, um, look for, well, when you hear about uh, the Minority Technology Association or um, those clubs that highlight minorities, the Black Cultural Center, go check them out. Um, just go, just go see what they're about. Listen and by meet someone that you become super close with, or just feel welcome um, because you know, you you know, you know. Um, and another thing that I would say is just when you're walking around campus, when you're in a class and you happen to see, you know, another someone with the same skin as you, just look over and say hi. Just say hi, start a conversation and just go from there um, because they're in the same boat as you. You know, um, coming in as a freshman, other freshmen are going to be looking for friends. Say hi. Same with um, us minorities. We're just, we're going to be looking for other minorities. Just say hi, start a conversation. Um, I guarantee, um, you know, it, it'll go pretty well. Meldra, you want to share about how you found your community when you were um, at Purdue? Yeah, uh, a big a big part of how I found just friends and, and, and people that were with me my entire college career were, were organizations. And so I was involved uh, in a lot of, student organizations like MTA and the ambassador program. And so um, that was just an easy way uh, to find just friends. And then also uh, uh, I was pretty, pretty outgoing in college. And so uh, if I seen like minorities in different classes that I, I took, you know, I initiated conversations, I, I put myself out there um, just because, you know, it's not many of you there to begin with. And so, you know, if you can connect with someone uh, who's taking similar classes, why not? And so uh, definitely put myself out there a little bit. So, and I probably got a little lucky as well. Uh, I had a lot of friends from high school that came with me to Purdue as well. So uh, just a few, it's just a few different ways how I kind of 
found uh, minority people that look like me. Um, Professor Sparkling, I want to go back to you because you were talking about building a community and friends on campus. So how do you tell students who need help with this? Um, what do you say to them? Yeah, so ironically, it happens to everyone, right? No matter what their race, gender, ethnicity, or what have you. But I tell them first and foremost, they all got into a great institution, right? They're all brilliant students, but they have to find community with one another. I remind them that these could be long life friendships, right? That transition beyond your college years. So they have to build that relationship with their peers immediately. I work with the Black Men Excellence Network. I mean, all these organizations are fantastic, but mainly, I think what the students are alluding to is you have to find those outlets uh, that are beyond the classroom because it, it, it happens outside the classroom in informal environments, whether it's sitting down sharing lunch with one another or, you know, just, just reading at the library or whatever the case may be. You have to build community, but you have to step out of your comfort zone and, and, and you know, reach across the line, so to speak, and say, hey, how are you doing today? How, how's, how, how, how's life treating you? Um, I think that's where it happens. And the students know it. I mean, they have to be uncomfortable. That's what it takes uh, to build their, their community and build their, their network and, and hold them dear. You have to, you have to uh, cultivate those relationships. Okay. Um, Joshua, what about you? Uh, with me, well, I'm, I'm of Mexican descent, so when I came here to Purdue, uh, it was very rare for me to meet someone that was also Latino and, and that spoke Spanish like me, so um, I got to introduce, actually, I was walking down to campus and uh, I saw these people at a table and it said Latino Student Union and they were selling, you know, Mexican candy and, and other goodies. Uh, I talked to them, they gave me uh, their information and I joined the Latino Student Union, which is, uh, you know, where all the Latinos meet up and hang out. Uh, and that was, you know, kind of a great kickstart for me to, to meet other people like me who are Hispanic, who we share the same beliefs. Um, and, you know, a lot of my friends came from, came from them. So for students that are coming to, to Purdue that are minorities, I definitely, you know, um, I would definitely say to reach out to to other clubs and uh, and, and you know get involved with them because those are going to be your friends for for the future. And like Professor said, you know these are going to be the relationships that last after college and the rest of your life. Okay, all oh, great um, suggestions, ideas, and um, again, um, you do have to get out of your comfort zone and do that. And you know one thing about with Purdue. Um, Purdue has five cultural centers on campus and they are open to everyone and anyone. And so you have your Latino cultural center, you have your black cultural center, you have your Asian American cultural, cultural center, you have your LGBTQ cultural center. Um, and then um, you have your, um, your um, age, your, I think I said the arc. Um, and so there's five cultural centers and again, you know, they are open to everyone and anyone, but, um, you know, you, you do have to reach out to people and, and, um, you know, these are friends that you will be making, um, long lasting friendships. Um, and I know with freshman year, you kind of feel, you know, you're trying to figure out this whole transition of, oh, I'm by myself and you know, I don't know anyone, or maybe you do know a couple of people, but again, um, you know, you, you just have to be open and you've got to be able to find the community that you best fit with. Um, and so that transition, let's talk about um, what are some of your favorite things that are you involved in on campus um, and how do you balance you know, from your studies, your different activities, your friends, um, you know, self-care, because that is so important. So, Lindsay, talk about how do you manage to balance, um, you know, your studies, your activities, your friends, your self-care? So, 
right now being a senior, I have a pretty light schedule, but for the past three years, I was just nonstop involved in anything that I could be involved in. And the way that I balanced it is, uh, um, fortunately, I was able to kind of tinker with my schedule a little bit, choose if I want to take my classes in the morning or in the afternoon. Um, I'm a morning person, so I was able to push all of my classes towards the front. Um, I didn't mind taking classes that started at 730 um and and ended at about one o'clock and then after that i would kind of go back to my dorm decompress a little bit uh do a little bit of homework and then i would go off to some club meeting in the afternoon or, or something like that or hang out with friends go to the dining court grab dinner or just watch a movie with with friends and i think the biggest thing that i would like to stress and kathy were talking about earlier is really self-care because when when you get on Purdue campus, there are so many smart people on on this campus, and you think that you have to keep up with the with the same like workload that everybody else is doing. People will study for like twenty hours, twenty hours a week, thirty hours a week, and you feel like you need to to keep up with that to be considered a competitive student. And you have to go at your own pace. You know, you have to make sure that you are learning the material, but you're not burning yourself out. Because once you burn yourself out, it's it's hard to regain that energy to want to continue. Um, so, so for me personally, I know when I can study. I know where I can study. I can't study in the library. I'm I'm not a good I'm not a good studier inside the library. I'm not a good studier at night. But I am a good studier outside, and I am a good studier in the morning and in the early afternoon. So it's kind of just picking and choosing um, when you want to put effort into studying and at what times, and then kind of taking the the times of the day where you are kind of less motivated to do a lot of studying or do a lot of schoolwork and putting that towards your relationships with, with your friends or your relationships with your peers and things like that. Very good advice. Very good. Um, also, um, do any of you go to the co rec um, to kind of release that stress and and you know do fun things. I all the time. I've, I've gone to bed like not like honestly. Oh wait, oops. Go ahead, go ahead, Lauren. Oh, sorry, I didn't know if I was saying something. Like that. But honestly, like last semester, I started going like more consistently, um, which honestly, like it was ironic because I went at like 6 a.m., but it was so good for my like mental and creative mindset as well as just my men my mental and like emotional health in general because I was being active. It kind of got me awake to go and do like my 7.30. And it also like, I did it with a friend. So it was also communal, which was also really nice to have that kind of like connection in the morning be like okay and it's also that accountability be like okay if you're gonna get up at 6 a.m i'm gonna get up at 6 a.m so okay so um just to um sorry i was talking about the correct thinking that our audience knows what the correct is and the nickname is correct but it's our recreational sports center it's basically the state-of-the-art facility for the com for purdue community and so um at the correct i mean you're able to rock climb, um, basketball, um, um, help me out. Um, uh, um, uh, um, there's weightlifting, there's spinning classes, there's yeah. tons of things out there. Yeah. So there's I'm lots. Try I, I go to the park every day too, and it, it's the, a great facility. Just um, be, be prepared to attend when when you get here. Like there's intramural sports. I mean, there's even badminton. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. then there's all the different machines that you can, you know, to work out. There's boxing, there's racquetball, uh, there's swimming. We have an Olympic size swimming pool, but it, it's state of the art and, and yes. definitely recommend Impressive. it's a really good way to release energy and release some stress for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Um, we have another question from our audience, um, and it's about the Honors College. Um, and so they want us to talk about the Honors College for minority students. Um, I don't know if any of you. Um, Lauren is an Honors. Lauren? Yeah. I'm in the Honors College, so I could. Was it just like minority students in general with the Honors yeah. College, or was there 
specific yeah, just minority students okay yeah for college. sure mm -hmm. so um the honors college so it's actually interesting because like originally going in i was kind of unsure about how the amount of minority students but it's actually like it kind of matches up with the university in some cases it's honestly a little bit more which is kind of cool just based on the way they do their admission um and with the honors college they don't really so there are some um organizations that have been more recent that are trying to do more for students of color or like students in the lgbt community who are in the honors college for them to be able to do stuff together and then the cool thing that also the honors college normally does a lot with um cultural centers so the honors college and like the latino cultural center the asian american cultural center will work together to bring a speaker both for like the honors college and those cultural centers so they do work a lot in kind of trying to bridge those gaps in the middle um, for my experience, it's been overall really positive. Like I haven't had any poor experiences like being a minority in the honors college and have been able to thrive in it, even have been able to thrive in it and meet other like minorities in the honors college as well. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so Lindsay, Lauren, and Mildred, um, let's, let's talk about, um, so when you you before you started your fall classes, you guys were in STEM ABC, which now we have changed it to um, STEM summer session. But what did that have on your foundation of being a successful student at Purdue? So um, Lindsay, you want to go first? Yeah, I can go first. Um, and I think there's like some background noise potentially coming from somewhere. Um, but so I was a part of STEM ABC, uh, the summer before my freshman year and STEM ABC is basically a, it's like a summer boot camp. It's a five week program for minorities that are in the Polytechnic Institute. You come, you spend all day, you take classes with about 20 to 25 other people that are in the Polytechnic Institute, as well as a few people from like College of Science or College of Agriculture. and uh, you just take back-to-back -back classes. You go to classes with the same people that you eat lunch with, that you room with. Um, and so for me, coming from out of state and not knowing anybody coming into the Polytechnic, that was such a great experience for me because I really got to form a tight-knit community um, with other minorities so that when I came into uh, my freshman year, I kind of already had a little bit of a group that I could ask questions with on homework, that I could go eat with, that I could hang out with. Um, and, and most of those people I hang out with on a daily basis, I'm gonna go hang out with them um, when, when this is over. So it's, it's, it's really great that you kind of get to find your niche um, uh, before the, the other 40,000 people come on campus. Um, in addition to that, and, and, and I mean, I tell Ms. Tony this all the time, that to me probably was the highlight of, of my entire time at Purdue because when you're there, you get pushed so much to give as much as you can um, and to really learn as much as you can. And, and when I was there, I would take class, I think we started at 7.30 in the morning and we ended at 3.30. And then we would, be, and then after that, once a week, we'd go to a different cultural center until we'd be able to experience um, uh, a lot of the different cultural centers on campus, or we would go bowling for like an hour or two, or we would go play dodgeball um, or just hang out at the co-rec or something like that. Um, and then you would go to lunch and then you would go to study hall. And so for me, having kind of like that strict schedule where I, where I was able to go to a study hall every single night really helped me kind of develop those habits um, once, once freshman year started. And, and in addition to that, I think probably the big thing was um, when you came in with everybody, we were all on the same playing field. Um, there was nobody that had come in with like do with like 25 AP credits or anything like that. We were all there just trying to learn and trying to make the most of our summer. And and at the end, you could potentially be eligible for a scholarship, which was really nice. Um, when you take the credits, 
none of the none of the classes that you take over the summer are actually for any credit for freshman year. Instead, they're going towards scholarship, and most of that is, I think, academic based scholarships or GPA based scholarships. Um, but the Polytechnic tries to give as many scholarships as they can to the people of STEM ABC. Um, and so, and so that was really a great just kind of like boost at the end. It, it was kind of like a nice pat on the back and a job well done to receive that as well. Thank you, Lauren. Meldroy, what about you? I know you have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, when I think about boot camp, I think about uh, community. You know, I think Dr. Spark, when he brought community up, but uh, I met so many friends through academic boot camp. Um, it's friends that I still talk to today, you know, people are considered best friends, people that I was roommates with, you know, that I met through the academic group. And so I think um, if you're looking for, you know, just people to meet before, you know, you actually start college, and, you know, before all the thousands of people get on campus, I think it's a good way to, to help with that. Um, it also helped prepare me to get in some of those uh, habits that I, I kind of mentioned before, you know, and so being organized, you know, when to do homework, when not to do homework, what works, you know, for you, you know, should you eat lunch before you do homework or dinner before you do homework, you know, things like that, that, you know, you got to play around with. Um, and, you know, you, it also was some sort of, some sort of competition as well. You know, you wanted to do good. You wanted to, you know, potentially win a, win a scholarship. And so uh, I definitely think that, you know, if you're, a little nervous about the college experience and you kind of want like a a trial to you know figure things out before you actually do the real thing you know i think academic boot camp is, is definitely uh something that you want to look into because it, it, it'll teach you so many things about you know what to do and what works for you and as well as you will meet so many awesome people okay which leads me into tony um she's going to talk about um stem um, summer session um, for our admitted students. Um, if they're, um, if we want them to be interested. We want them to be able to come for the summer. And so, Tony, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, so you can talk more about STEM. All right, um, uh, uh, Lindsay and Meldray, it has changed a little bit. I know when you guys came, it it wasn't for credit. But now summer session is for credit polytechnic summer session, you can take up to 9 credits uh, for for credit and, and it's just a really good way to jump start your your academics while you're here. Um, it is a great way to you know get acclimated to campus it's a really good way like um, Meldre say to create that community because you are you're in a cohort group of maybe you know 20 students you're all like uh, Lindsay said in the same in the same area taking similar courses and supporting each other and just and it's summertime so it's fun you do so it's not just all academics we do some fun things as well and so this year um it will be july 11th through august 13th and um we haven't sent out the invitations but i think most of you that are watching will be sent an invitation uh to to join us for the summer we do have some scholarships available as well because it is for credit it's going to be a lot more expensive in-state students i think it's like three thousand something uh I think it's like $3,800 um, and that's for room for the nine credits for um, for your food. It's for everything. But I do have, I think, several scholarships available where in-state students can get full ride. And so you definitely have to apply as early as you can because I only have a limited amount of scholarships. And then out-of-state students, um, it's it, the cost is a little bit higher because it's out-of-state. And I think we're giving $2,500 scholarships for those students. 